Hello, I'm David Hughes. Welcome to part 5 of our series on Bhagavad Gita. This section is entitled The Real Doer. And you can download chapter 3 of Bhagavad Gita at the location given above. Read along with us and understand the issues that we're discussing. Lord Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita that the reason we are entangled in the laws of karma is because of a misconception. We think that we are the doers and that we are the enjoyers of the results of our work. But actually, all these activities are carried out by the laws of material nature under the direction of God. So actually, God is the real doer through the laws of material nature that he ordains. We aren't the doers, and therefore we aren't entitled to the results of our actions. This simple realization is the key to becoming free from the laws of karma. So you might ask, what does someone who has this understanding do? How do they act and how do they work in the world? After all, we have to feed ourselves, we have to take care of our bodies, uh, we have to do so many things just to exist in this world. So if the results of our actions are not ours to enjoy, how do we motivate ourselves to act? How do we work and how do we think? Most people's work is motivated by sense gratification. In other words, the needs of our senses push us into action so that we can enjoy the senses and experience the results as sense gratification. However, a person in the divine consciousness is not motivated by the material senses, but by the conception of duty and love for God. Instead of working for sense enjoyment, which we don't need because we have the pleasure of spiritual love within, we work for the satisfaction of God. We work as a matter of duty to lead people on the right path by setting a good example. And we also work to give our beloved Lord the satisfaction of knowing that we're following his will. As we discussed last time, the difference between working for sense enjoyment and working to satisfy God is that when we do work in devotion, we do not have to suffer the results of karmic reactions. Of course, we still have to experience karmic reactions from our previous work before we started working in devotional consciousness. But by working in devotion for the satisfaction of God, we do not create any new karma for ourselves. In other words, we get free from the laws of karma by acting on the spiritual platform. Krishna says those who follow this teaching and work according to duty without envy, following his instructions, becomes free from the attachment of material reactions. We have to become free from attachment. We also have to become free from aversion. In other words, liking something and disliking something are both simply based on the concept of sense gratification. What would be pleasing to me? Instead, we have to start looking at things in terms of what would be pleasing to God. Just like if I have a dear friend or beloved mate, I'll base so many of my activities and considerations on thinking what would be pleasing to my friend or what would be pleasing to my mate. Why? Because out of love, I want to satisfy him or her. So similarly, if I'm acting for the benefit of the Lord, I'll always take thought, would this action be satisfying to him? Would this course of thinking or this course of work actually satisfy him, actually be pleasing for him? The real problem and the thing that gets us in so much trouble is lust. In other words, the desire to enjoy the senses. If you can control your senses and stop acting out of lust and instead act out of love for God and a sense of duty towards his instructions, then we can be freed from the causes of misery. Everything in this material world is imperfect and temporary, but the soul is eternal and perfect. Therefore, we find problems with everything in this material world. Nothing is right. 
And even though we may get a little enjoyment out of our senses, in the end, there's always some problem. Huh? There's always some imperfection or it has to end. That's the nature of this material world. But love of God never ends. And service to God is also unlimited, eternal, and perfect. So you might say, well, how am I going to change the way I work? How am I going to change my motivation? I've been doing this my whole life, and it's very difficult to change. Well, I agree. Habits are really difficult to change. Therefore, we need to develop a new habit. And that habit is chanting the holy name of God. The process by which we become detached from our senses and conquer over lust is by training the senses, the tongue, the ear, and especially the mind, to always think about God, to always think what would be his pleasure, what would be his preference, and to follow those. Therefore, the holy name of God, or the mantra given by the guru, is the most important tool for changing our consciousness from material to spiritual and to freeing ourselves from the actions and reactions of material karma based on work that we do for sense gratification. Just as the living senses are superior to dull matter, so the mind is superior to the senses, the intelligence is superior to the mind, and the soul is superior to the intelligence. So if we engage our soul, our spiritual intelligence, by chanting the holy name, then we will find it's very easy to overcome the pushing of the senses and stop getting pushed around by lust and instead base our activities on real intelligence, spiritual knowledge, and duty. To do this, we have to develop spiritual strength. Spiritual strength is developed by hearing. And the subject matter for hearing is the transcendental philosophy of Bhagavad Gita, as spoken by Lord Krishna, and the holy name, as given in the mantra of the Guru. If you would like a mantra, you can come to our website, you can look at the different articles, and you can see which mantra is appropriate for you. We offer this as a free public service, there's no charge. We are interested in your spiritual benefit. We already have the benefit and we would like to share it with you. So visit our website, read the articles, join the forums, and get the benefit of real spiritual intelligence. This is the message of Bhagavad Gita. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya